Welcome back to another episode here of the IU Film Room with Coach Adrania. Uh, I'm your host, Tony Adrania, and uh, I had a lot of questions of people asking me about the uh, Mike Woodson offense, particularly uh, four out, one in motion has gotten a lot of talk. Um, so basically in this video, I kind of wanted to just talk about what the four out, one in might look like with Indiana's team. Uh, in the 21-22 season, um, how I think Mike Woodson might utilize things, and essentially who I think the offense might be kind of emulated after. And uh, it's no secret that Villanova runs a tremendous four-out, one-in motion offense. Uh, there's also some other schools that do it. Davidson, although theirs is more of a five-out now. Uh, Casey Alexander at Belmont, formerly of Liberty, uh, runs a great motion offense. So Kansas runs a good motion offense, so Villanova is not the only school to run a good motion offense. However, it's who I see Indiana emulating the most. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk through some of the, I guess, elementary levels of the four-out, one-in motion, then dive into some clips from Villanova's offense this past season, and then um, also some IU's clips, although I'm going to try to keep those to a minimum just because some of them are a little painful, but... Uh, more so than anything, just want to talk through the four out, uh, one in motion, and, and kind of how I can see IU utilizing that with their personnel next season. And uh, yeah, so appreciate you watching. So the first thing that I want to talk through is some of the spots in the motion offense, um, or particularly the four out, one in motion offense, because I think uh, that's important to talk through. Um, when it comes to motion and, and the four out one in in particular. So uh, the places I'm drawing right here, so we've got here and here. These are called the slots. Uh, these are typically going to be occupied in a four out one in motion. And I apologize that my, my circles are not better. Um, right here is called free throw line extended. And these are the wings. It's called free throw line extended. Uh, sorry if this is a little elementary for some of you, but it's called free throw line extended because if the free throw line were extended, um, that's where it would go to. So the wings are, are, are other spots that you'll see players filling in the four out, one in motion. And then you, you've got the corners as well. So usually you'll find your perimeter players in one of these six spots. Um, so four of the six are typically occupied um, in terms of the post. The five is going to usually occupy one of the blocks, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Or the elbows, or they're coming out to set a ball screen. So uh, bigs are usually somewhere in these four spots along the paint, and then you've got your guards outside along the perimeter. So when it comes to those spots and spacing, so usually you'll see your big somewhere like here, or here in this spot right here is called the dunker spot um, it's called the dunker spot because and it's usually this guy is going to be opposite of the ball so the ball would typically be like around here on the wing and it's called the dunker spot because if this guy drives to the hoop and this guy's defender comes to help then you can dump off to the big there and he dunks it so these spots here used to be called kind of the short corner um, a lot of times people refer to it as the dunker spot now. So I could see Trace Jackson Davis spending a lot of time in the dunker spot. Um, something else I want to highlight. So basically, let's say there's a guy here and a guy here. This space between them or this gap is called a single gap, which means you're basically one pass away. So single gap. Uh, it's really hard to drive a single gap um, because of the defenders. Now let's say there's a guy here and there's a guy here. Now this space here, two passes away, is what you would call a double gap. So as you can see, a little bit more space to work with. So if there's a guy here and there's a guy here who has the basketball. If this guy's defender is right here, guarding here, but he's in a little bit of help side, 
this guy has a lot more space to work with to try and drive. Whereas if it was here in a single gap, the fender's right here, this guy doesn't have a lot of space to operate. So double gap and then a triple gap would be, let's say you got a guy in the corner and then you got a guy here. Now he's three passes away, all of that space. That is what you would call a triple gap. And I give you all that information because the motion offense, um, a lot of it is trying to create double gaps and triple gaps for guys to be able to drive the lane um, and get into the lane. So I just wanted to highlight that um, kind of at a, a higher level um, just to talk about some of the spacing that you're going to see in a four out one in motion offense in spots on the floor that you're going to see guys occupy. Before we dive into some of the Villanova clips, um, a couple points that I just want to talk about in Villanova's motion offense that you'll see. So uh, let's say that their offensive line alignment looks something uh, like this to start. And this guy has the basketball. So uh, if he passes the ball to from slot to slot is what they call it, you're going to see basically immediately these guys are always going to exchange um, in that type of scenario. So you're going to see slot to slot. Um, it's going to be a weak side exchange. What that does, and you'll see it in the clips, is basically if this guy here and this guy here, and they have their defenders guarding them here and here, when they exchange, their defenders have to exchange as well. So that's keeping the defense occupied on the weak side rather than just being able to stand and watch what's going on with the basketball. Uh, those weak side exchanges you're going to be able to see uh, on film that it's really going to keep the defense occupied. So a lot of weak side exchanges. Also, like I mentioned, if the ball is right here and there's a guy here, the dunker spot is always occupied opposite of where the ball's at. So when this ball is swung from slot to slot, you're usually going to see the guy in the dunker spot go to the opposite side of the floor. So just some things to keep your eyes on uh, when it comes to Villanova's offense and how they're constantly keeping guys moving. Um, and then there's a lot of shallow cuts and, and things like that that we'll look at in the film. But I just wanted to walk through some high level with some really crappy drawings uh, on how some of this motion offense might work. So the first thing I want to show here is what happens on a post up uh, in Villanova's four out one in motion offense. So see the ball down, thrown down. I'm just going to let this clip run Robinson through. Robinson Earl defended by Champagne. Great Stop matchup there. Anything. Robinson Earl anything. around. So it looks like a pretty basic post up. Um, something we saw IU try to do a lot last year was post their their big up with Trace Jackson Davis. But now let's watch a little bit deeper. So the ball is entered into the post. You're going to see this guy cuts through. So he's keeping his man occupied right off the bat. So we got that guy cutting through. Robinson. Now we just saw sorry my uh, drawing still on there. So we just saw these two guys exchanged. But that's not even where it stops. You're now going to see these two guys exchange while all of that's going on. So a kind of a double exchange there so if we watch here so it, it's constantly keeping the Benerol defense defended by occupied great match up there Robinson Earl there. around Champagne so let's watch it again they foot third time here balls entered you see that uh, these guys are about to interchange and then you're going to see another interchange here as I said this guy just cut through to the corner so the guys that are guarding these guys that are moving, they're having to focus on their men, and they're not completely focused on the ball. And you'll see what I mean with that uh, when I show the next clip. So you see the exchanges. Robinson Earl defended by Champagne. Great matchup there. On Robinson Earl around Champagne. Now let's look at Trace Jackson Davis catching the ball here on this post up in the Big Ten tournament, and let's see if there's that same type of movement. Nine minutes saw. remaining. So Trace catches. Now look at everybody out on the perimeter. Jackson Davis. Pretty much good still. Trace Jackson Davis still got a good look at it, um, but just not nearly the movement that Villanova was able to create um, for their post player. 
So we'll look at another TJD post up here. And again, the, TJD is actually getting some decent looks on these. So just imagine the looks that he can get when there's some movement created off the ball. So he catches, and pretty much Jackson everybody Davis just stands Williams. in the exact spot. Stefanovic was able to dig. Uh, TJD ultimately ended up missing that, but um, just the movement and the difference. Rewind it if you have to to look back at the Villanova movement versus the Indiana movement, and I think we're going to see more of the Villanova type movement as we look into Mike Woodson's four out one in motion offense. So a couple minutes ago, I talked about the um, single gap, double gap, and triple gap, and how motion offenses are designed to try to create double and triple gaps which are basically the amount of space that a player has to drive. Um, so I just want to demonstrate that here with one of Villanova's great simple, I mean, it's simple action. So you see that that pass there, and this player who passed it you're going to see is going to cut to here, and his defender is going to have to go with him. So that creates just an absolutely humongous. So now I can show you gap because – He's driving to his right into space here. Next closest player is a double gap away, almost a triple gap. So this defender here, even if he wants to get all the way into help side, now he's leaving the shooter open. But that double gap is just so much space to work with, and that's a lot of what you're going to see in a four-out, one-in motion offense is trying to create these double gaps for driving opportunities for players. Um, and you're actually going to see a pretty tough shot hit here the um, on a pull-up. It didn't have to be that's that much tough, better but by St. John, Villanova is a heck different of a type of player. But I'll just already. run it in uh, fast motion for you to be able to see just a short little shallow cut so that just creates a ton of driving opportunity. That's much better defense by St. John's, but that's a heck of a shot. Gillespie Gillespie already. So this clip's got a little bit of everything I talked about in my explainer at the beginning in terms of double gaps, triple gaps, uh, exchanges. Um, so what we're going to see here is kind of a almost a five out attack, but it's four out one in motion. Um, we're going to see ball screen coming here, but I want you to watch also. I want you to watch the action away because you're going to see exchange here, and then you're going to see them actually exchange back again while this ball screen is taking place. So um, you're going to see an exchange to keep the defense occupied, which you're going to see a lot in four out one in. Right now, and what you're going to see here. So now, you might think this is pretty poor spacing, which it's not great. However, everything in this play is designed for this ball to go back on this short roll. They know that Creighton is going to hedge that ball screen. They're going to try to hit back. And then when this guy hit, gets the ball back, this right here is a double gap. Now, he's going to make it harder on himself and not use that gap. He's actually going to go the opposite way. But as you can see, when he catches this ball, he's going to have a ton of space to work with, and that's what this uh, certain action within the motion offense was designed to create. They got exactly what they were looking for. And because of just a small exchange away, keeping those defenders occupied, he's actually going to be able to drive middle. Um, so like I said, you're going to see, watch those guys in the far end. They exchange right there. Exchange back, keeping the defense occupied. That way the guy is able to drive middle, even though he had no space to his right and two points. So I showed you those last couple clips uh, with just how a simple exchange can keep the defense on. It's like the last clip you had like a guy here and a guy here and they were able to just exchange away, keeping the defense on, keeping the help side occupied. Well, I want you to watch Christian Lander in this clip in particular, um, which right now he's right here. But once he gets to that corner, I want you just to watch him. Duke guards about entry passes to Edie. Standing, they say just standing. put it sort of in the vicinity and you're there. fine. And that's Still what Stefanovic there. did. So movement, standing, standing. Maybe comes up just a hair right there. But just, it, it's a complete mindset shift. It's seen, something that seems so simple. And I know it seems so simple uh, of just an exchange aware or something like that. But those little things add up to something big. And that can be the difference between wins and losses. Um, and so that's you're just going to see more of those just simple type things, exchanges away, guys that are constantly in motion, I think, in a Mike Woodson four out one in, then what you'll see uh, or what you saw on that clip uh, with uh, Christian Lander there. So the first time you watch this clip here, I want you to only not even pay attention to the ball yet. I want you just to watch 
again simple exchange between these two guys simple exchange between these two guys and that's all I want you to even pay attention to on this clip the first time I run it Isaiah Moore does most of his damage Shame. on the inside and he did some damage oh, on Villanova wow. yeah. the first time around all right, nice so take now by just we can the rewind year a little bit here so now based on those simple exchanges watch the def defenders that are guarding these exchanges they're worried about this exchange and they're staying glued to these guys on these exchanges and all while that's happening all of this space is empty there's nobody in the way um, all that space is empty just based on simple exchanges on that offense and based on those exchanges Sam Moore, and all most that of space his damage there, on the inside you've got an open and driving lane damage on Villanova the first time around. nice take by Justin so based on that last clip, you've got basically the paint wide open. Guys have driving lane opportunities. And then I look at this simple possession from uh, IU versus Rutgers uh, in this past the season. So you're really going to see a ball screen from Trace Jackson Davis with Armand Franklin, who's arguably uh, best player or, or best guard, excuse me. Well, he's coming off that ball screen going to his left. If he wanted to shoot a layup, he couldn't. Even if he had the most wide open lane, uh, because Trace Jackson Davis had the best screen in the history of the world. IU was purposely planting a guy right in his driving lane uh, last season. So I talked about the dunker spot. With the dunker spot um, in a four-out, one-in motion offense, Jerome Hunter more than likely would have been like here and would have made this guy, who I think is Ron Harper Jr., make a decision of helping off or stopping the drive. But instead... Um, you know, I use placing a guy in the ball side block was part of their offense last year. I don't think you'll see that in four out one in. Um, and yeah, so basically what you're going to see is a really tough contested two to from Armand Davis. Franklin Instead that has to be a set back uh, because of the spacing issues and, and lack of motion with I use offense last season. So in this clip here, I want you to watch Donald number one and the guy guarding him. Uh, for reference, number one is this guy here. Um, I want you to watch him and the way he moves as this possession develops. So right now he's going to go opposite side of the floor. So here's what happens. So his man is now in help side defense. All right, He's the lowest man. So lowest man, he's got to really be talking. He's got to be loud. He's got to keep his head on a swivel. Well, all you're going to see here is like I said with Villanova the simple exchanges so right now boom you see that exchange happen on Villanova so like I said he was right here this positioning of that defender would be great if that guy just stood in the corner like Christian Lander did but that's not how Villanova's offense works that's not how a four out one in motion offense works now he's here on the wing his man has an extremely long closeout as you see this ball get reversed and ultimately, um, the guy's got confidence to knock Very down a shot. He catches ready to shoot. Three points for Villanova. So, like I said, it's little things. It's subtle things that can make the biggest difference. Um, you know, we don't have to look farther than IU season last year. Just a couple of things go different ways. You know, they win a couple more games that were in overtime or something like that. But here's something that seems extremely minor. But we're going to see a post-up. You're going to see an exchange away because, like I said, you're going to see a ton of these exchanges. You're going to see an exchange here between these two guys on Villanova. And that exchange away doesn't seem like a big deal. Exchange away, exchange away. Shot. You think, okay, that guy's got a good shot. Like, what's the big deal there? But I want you to watch. If those guys just stood, A, nothing's getting accomplished there. But I want you to watch just the most subtle thing. You're going to see this guy who's guarding this guy actually run in to his own guy and almost set a pick on him on this exchange and that just half a second delay of him running into him is what actually opens up uh, the shot so I just want you to watch those two guys boom right here he's about to run into him on this exchange away and that's just gonna create a slight delay for a guy to be able to catch and shoot moving first half, just in Again, it's the little things, and those are the things I'm super excited about that I think we're going to see with Mike Woodson's uh, four-out, one-in motion offense. 
like I said, I think we're going to see a lot of things similar uh, to what Villanova runs and the actions they run. Um, a lot of ball screens being set, guys in constant motion, a lot of exchanges away. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of that just standstill, set-based offense that we saw with Archie Miller. So I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of a dive into what I think some of this four-out, one-in stuff can look like with Indiana um, and how I think they can utilize the four-out, one-in motion offense. Um, but you also have to remember, too, Mike Woodson is an NBA, uh, former NBA head coach. He's got a lot of sets in his back pocket. So um, if there's ever times where the motion's not working or, or, you know, coming out of timeouts and they need a set, he's going to have his fair share of those as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. But if you did like this video, please follow me on, on Twitter at Coach Adrania. Um, you know, subscribe, like, all that good stuff on YouTube. Tell your friends, uh, post it wherever, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, all the support. So until next time, this is Coach Adrania with IU Film Room. Thanks for watching.